day, good day, good people. I am excited to bring to you video number four of the Ultimate List Builder in Memory Jaga. My name is Shannon M. Hamilton, and I am more excited about this video. Oh, man, a lot of work has went into this. Now we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of uh, categorizing your list and what to do with your list once you have it. And remember, this list is going to grow daily. So guys, strap your seatbelts on, get your pens and paper out, get ready to take some amazing notes, because this right here is going to set your business on fire. And what I want to do before we even jump in is let you know we are beyond your warm market. You can find us on facebook.com slash groups forward slash beyond your warm market. And you can also personally find me on facebook.com. I am Shannon M. Hamilton. So as we jump into these videos, um, what I want to kind of go over first is creating your active candidates list. These are people you're going to call right away. And then we're going to go into categorizing your list. So let's go ahead and categorize that list. The hot candidates list. This is your closest friends and family. Then you're going to categorize the second part of your list. Uh, those are people you're going to lead with the product. Whatever your product is, you're going to talk to those people specifically uh, about the benefits of your product or service. Then the direct approach candidate list, the indirect approach candidates list, and the super indirect candidates list. So this is going to be exciting. Now here we go. Nuts and bolts of the whole thing. The hottest proven recruiting scripts in all of network marketing. Guys, your company your mentors, they may have some really good information, but the information I'm going to share with you, no matter what company you're in, no matter what your product or service may be, these have been proven to get you through that and take you to a network, network marketing professional level. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about step one. Always, 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 always be in a hurry. This is a psychological issue but people are always more attracted to people who always who who are busy. It is what it is, and and has things going on. If you start every call or face to face conversation with the feeling like you're in a hurry, you'll find your invitation will be shorter. There will be less questions, and people will respect you and your time. Here's what I'm going to give you now. Is here's a few in a hurry script examples for your war market. For example, you call one of the people on your uh, list. Hey, I don't have a lot of time to talk, but I really, I, uh, but it, it was really important that I reach you. Then share the information. I have a million things going on. Hey, look, I got a million things going on, but I'm glad I caught up with you. And then share the information. Remember, you're in a hurry. I'm running out, out the door, but I needed to talk to you real quick. Now, here are people that's not in your warm market, your cold market. Now is it time to get into this, but I have to go. But here, anyway, here's the information. Boom. And I'll, we'll go into that a little bit more uh, in depth. Hey, I have to run, but get the message, the tone. Uh, set the tone with a, some sense of urgency. Set the tone with a sense of urgency. I'm going to say it one more time. You are in a hurry. Set the tone with a sense of urgency. Step two, compliment the prospect. Think about when somebody has complimented you and it was a sincere compliment. This is cri critical. The sincere compliment, and it must be sincere, opens the door for real communication and will make the prospect much more agreeable to him what you have to say. Here are some example um, sample compliment scripts for warm market prospects. You've been widely successful, and I've always respected the way you've done business. One good example. You've always been so supportive of me, and I appreciate that so much. Another good compliment. You're one of the most connected people I know. I've always admired that about you. You are you have an amazing mind for business, and I can see things other people don't see. I was thinking, who are the sharpest people I know? And I thought of you. You're one of the most positive and energetic people I've ever met. Some people are very closed-minded, with which limits their opportunities, but I've always admired the fact that you're open to looking at new things. 
you can kind of see where all this is going when you compliment somebody's guys. This is what's so exciting about this. I need, here's another one. I need someone to find the holes in something I'm looking at and I abs absolutely nothing gets past you. That's complimenting a detailed person. You're one of the most health conscious, if that's the person, technologically savvy, fashion or business conscious, well-minded, financial intelligence, whatever the case may be, people I know and I've always respected that about you. Another great compliment. You're one of the smartest people I know and I really trust your judgment. Think about that. What if somebody told that to you? For as long as I've known you, I thought you were the best at what you do. See, one of those lines, scripts, or multiple sometimes will get you in the door and get that person listening to you. Now let's do it with cold prospects. You've given, uh, you've given me or us some of the best service in we've, that we've ever received, that or I've ever received. Let me do that one one more time. You've given me some of the best service I've ever received, or you've given us some of the best service we've ever received. That opens the door for further conversation. You're super sharp. Can I ask you, what do you do for a living? Another situation when the person is not in the service industry. You've made a blank, fantastic experience. Here, let me give you an example. You're on vacation. Hey, you've, you've made our vacation a fantastic experience. Or you've made getting my car repaired here a fantastic experience. You've made shopping for clothes here a fantastic experience. Uh, the key is to compliment the person and be sincere. Find something you can compliment your prospect on and then compliment them. It could be simple. I love the color of your hair. I love the shoes you have on. Oh, that perfume or cologne really smells good. Whatever the case may be, find something and compliment them. Let's jump into step three. This is critical because once you've done step one and two, now step three is where it's critical. In this situation, one size does not fit all. I've provided a list of direct approach, approaches which you will use when you're talking about an opportunity for them specifically. Indirect approaches which you will use to ask for help, advice, and then the super indirect approaches which you will use to ask people if they know others who might be interested. See, now we're covering all the categories when it comes to making the invitation. Most people use a direct approach for all their prospects. Think about it. Is that you? Now we're going to teach you a little something different. Usually it goes something like this. I found a way to get rich. Let me tell you all about it. Blah, 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 blah. Then you start sounding like Charlie Brown to that person or Charlie Brown's teacher. You know what I'm talking about. You kind of, we say you throw up on them or you gave them a fire hose when they really wanted a glass of water. So, I understand your passion, but really, who's going to be excited about that unless they're getting that call from a millionaire? If you're already a millionaire, hey, this, is a, this may apply to you. As you become a network marketing professional, you're going to find out that using the indirect and super indirect approaches much more, but that doesn't mean the direct approach doesn't have its important place. So here's a few direct approach scripts. Like I said earlier, remember, always do steps one and two first. Now let's jump into the scripts. When you told me blank, were you serious or were you just kidding around? Wait for the answer. Great. I think I found a way for us to get, solve that problem or make that happen. Here's an example. Hey, when you told me that you were thinking about quitting your job, were you serious or were you just kidding? No, I'm serious. I'm going to quit. Great. It's not great that they're quitting the job, but great. I've, I think I found a way for us to help you make some extra income while you're transitioning to that job or make this happen. Or you were thinking about going on vacation. Hey, you told me you wanted to go on an exotic vacation. Were you serious or were you just kidding around? Oh, I'm real serious. Great. I think I found a way for us to help you make the extra money so that you could go on that exotic vacation. See how you just fill in the blanks. I think I found a way for us to really boost our cash flow. Hey, I found something you really need to see. I like this one because that's more of my personality. I can go to one. Hey, hey, uh, let me use one of my friends, Derek. Hey, Derek, man, I found something you really need to see. His natural reaction is what? And then, I, you know, I've already done steps one and two, step three. Or I'm launching a new business. I really want you to take a look at it. What is it? 
Boom. That's what you're waiting on. What is it? Um, are you still looking for a job or a different job? I found a way for both of us to start a, a great business without all the risk. Boom. They're going to ask, how? If I told you there was a way to increase your cash flow without jeopardizing what you're doing right now, would you be interested? They're going to say, well, how? All you're doing is peaking their interest. This is the direct approach. Remember, this is not going to work on everybody, but there's a lot of people when you create that list, this will work on. Hey, I've teamed up with a company that's expanding here in the Atlanta area. Boom. That gets, really? What's the name of the company? What do they do? I found something exciting and you're one of the first people I've called. Really? What is it? All you're doing is peaking interest. When I thought of quality people that I really enjoy working with, I thought of you. Would you be open to hearing what I'm doing? Yeah, what you doing? Then you share the information. And I'm going to go into that a little bit further. Let me ask you something. Would you be open to diversifying your income? Who wouldn't? Nobody wants just linear income. Let me ask you a question off the record. If there were a business you could start working part-time from home, that could replace your full-time income, would this be of interest to you? Well, yeah. What is it? Boom. As you know, I've been a, I've been a, in a personal trainer, but because of me losing my gym, that's, that's honestly in my case, I've decided to diversify my income. After considering my options, I've uh, identified the, the very best way for me to make this happen. I want to share it with you. Or let's talk about it. And they're going to ask questions. I found, hey, I found an exciting business, and together, I think, uh, and I think we could do something special. We can make one plus one might add up to ten. Really? What are you talking about? Um, and here's some for the coal coal market. Have you ever thought of diversifying your income? Do you keep your career options open? Do you plan on doing what you're doing now for the rest of your career? Most, most people may say no. You never know if you don't ask the question. You can follow, you, you can follow any of these cold market scripts or any variation with the following. And I have something that might interest you. Now's the time to get into the but. I'm sorry. Now's not the time to get, get into it. However, or but let me send you some information and I'll kind of go into that a little bit more. Here's the indirect script. The indirect approach, another powerful tool helping people get past their initial resistance and understanding your opportunity. How many times have you tried to talk to somebody and they give you resistance? I'm going to tell you, even as a successful network marketer, I still run into this, I would say nine times out of 10, resistance. The approach is best used when you're just getting started and is simply asking people for help or guidance. So that's why it's important to make that list. I use this approach extensively when I, with great success when I first started out. It was harder for me to get much success with the direct approach at first. So I just learned to play myself down, uh, play up to the prospect's ego, think about it, your friend, you know, the broke one, they always know more than you. <laughs> but it worked incredibly well, and I still use it from time to time today. So for warm markets, here we go. I just started a new business, and I'm scared to death. Before I get going, I need to practice on someone friendly. Would you mind if I practice on you? Sure. That's the best one. I'm going to tell you why, because now you're going to be pitching them, and they're going to be evaluating themselves doing your job. Well, I could probably, they're going to be saying to themselves, I could probably do that. Tell me more about it. And you're actually telling them about it. I'm thinking about getting started with a business I can run from my home. Would you help me check it out and see if it's for real? Think about that. I found a business I'm really excited about. But what I, but what do I know? You have some, so much experience. Would you look at it for me and, um, and would you look at it for me if I made it easy and let me know if you think I'm making the right move. Another good one. 
A friend told me the best thing I could do when starting a business to have people I respect, which I respect you, take a look at it and give me some guidance. Would you be willing to do that for me if I made it simple? Here's one for negative and cynical people. Now, I know you don't know anybody like that, but for some reason, when it comes to network marketing, I seem to find them all. <laughs> so here we go. I've started a business and I really need someone to help me poke holes in it. Nothing gets past you. Would you be willing to examine it for me? Naturally, they're going to say yes because you just gave them a compliment. And that's something you can do with people who you already know are negative. And you, that's that person on your list. You don't want to call them because they're negative. Boom. That's how you get through to them. Now, let's jump into the super indirect script. Super indirect approaches are incredibly powerful and play on a number of psychological levels. This is a networking approach that asks the prospect if they know someone else that might benefit from the business. I use this approach all the time with great success. I love this approach as well. So for your warm market, the business I'm, this business clearly isn't for you. But I wanted to ask, who do you know that's ambitious, money motivated, and would be excited about the idea of adding more cash flow to their lives? They're thinking in the back of their mind, me, but they're not going to tell you that. So let's move on. Who do you know that might be looking for a strong business that could run that they could run from their home? I'm gonna promise you this: every every mom out there, every mom out there, is looking for something they can do at home. Who do you know that has hit a wall with their business and might be looking for a way to diversify their income? This is the question you're asking that prospect in your warm market that you didn't want to ask them to do the business. You ask them, who do they know? Do you know any people sharp who live in Atlanta, who live in Baltimore, who lives in Mexico, who lives in wherever? You choose the place. And they're going to say, yeah, great. Could I get their name and contact information if you have it? I have a business expanding to their area, and I want to see if they think it would be successful there. You know, if, if you have somebody you're calling that's on your list that lives in California or used to live in California or Wyoming or wherever, that's where you ask them, do they know somebody there? I mean, if they just moved to Atlanta, you that might not be a good question to ask them. You know what I mean? Use some discretion. Use some some um, some professional thought when you're making that call. Here's the next one. Do you know anyone involved uh, in a serious job search? We all know somebody looking for a job, just lost a job, you know, ready to switch jobs. Um, so you're just asking that person that question. I work with a company that is expanding in your area, and I'm looking for some sharp people that might be interested in some additional cash flow. If you're getting this right now, uh, around September, October, November, December, everybody wants extra cash for the holidays. Everybody wants extra cash for the holidays. Do you know anyone that might fit this description? Come on. All right, moving on. In most cases, they're going to ask you for more information before they give you any names. Behind that request, this is what you got to understand. Behind that request will be curiosity and intrigue, thinking this might be for them. But they're not going to admit that to you, not just yet anyway. When they ask you for more information first, just respond like this. That makes sense. You'll want to know about it before you refer some of your contacts. And okay, let's go to step four. So just think about that. That makes sense. You know what? You'll want to know more about this before you refresh some of your contacts. So let's go to step four. If I blank, would you blank? You're not going to offer your third party tool unless they agree to do something in return. This right here is one of the most powerful uh, tactics, tools you can learn so you won't waste your time. Step four, this has been my secret weapon for a very, very long time. So if you've been frustrating in network marketing or marketing period, this will help solve that. Check this out. Here's an example. If I gave you a DVD that laid out all the information in a very professional way, would you watch it? If I gave you a CD that described the business, would you listen to it? 
If I gave you a magazine or some other prospecting material, would you read it? If I gave you a link to an online presentation that explained everything, would you click on it and watch it? If you've done the first three steps proper, properly, the answer will always be yes for the most part. If they ask you for more information first, just respond with, Hey, I understand that you want more information, but all of what you're looking for is on the DVD, CD, the printed material, or the link. The fastest way for you to really understand what I'm talking about will be to review the material that I'm talking about, the CD, DVD, printed material, or the link. So if I gave it to you, would you review it? Now, here's, here's where most people get lost. If that person says no. They won't review it, then thank them for their time and move on. Um, also, what you have to do, don't get emotional about a no. You will definitely get more no's than yeses. Review steps one through three. Find ways that you can improve uh, and see what you have done, what you can do better. But what I do not want you to do is still give the person the information. That's key. And here's a pro tip for you. Always keep them on your list, you know, and then you're, you're going to see some other things I'm going to teach you in a second, but you want to keep them on the list and ask you if you, and ask them if you can contact them in 30 days or 60 days, whichever you're comfortable with, depending on your, your busy schedule, because you're busy from now just to check in. And then it goes something like this. Hey, I understand now is not a good time for you, but is it okay if I contact you in, in 30 days to, to let you know the progress I'm making in my brand new business? Or if, you know, hey, I'm super busy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to contact you in, in a month. How about uh, if I contact you in 60 days and just see where we at? Is that cool? What that person's thinking in their mind is that you're going to forget and that you're not going to follow up. But being a network networking professional, you're going to write go home or on your phone. You're going to put that on your calendar in 30 or 60 days, whichever you agree on. You're going to reach out and contact that person. So step five. We're almost done. It's only eight steps. We're at step five. Get a time commitment. When do you think you can watch the DVD for sure? When do you think you could listen to the CD for sure? When do you think you could read the magazines for sure? When do you think you could watch the link for sure? You're asking open-ended questions and let them answer. Don't suggest a time for them. Ask the question and have them give you the time. If it's not definitive, I'll try to do it sometime, then tell them. I don't want to waste your time nor mine. Why don't we just lock in a time that you've seen the information for sure? The key is to get them to say yes a second time. You'll understand those yeses add up. Now you want step six, the confirmation. If they tell you they'll watch the DVD by Tuesday night, your, your response should be, so if I called you on Wednesday morning, you'll have seen it for sure, right? You're going to say, yeah. If they tell you they'll listen to the CD by Thursday morning, your response should be, so if I call you sometime on Thursday, you'll have listened to it for sure, right? You, you kind of get where this is going. If they say they'll watch the link by July 1st, your response should be, so if I called you on July 2nd, you'll have watched it for sure, right? The key to step six is that you now said yes three times that they'll follow through and they'll do they've done it by themselves. That'll set a real appointment for you for the future. All right, step number seven, last two steps. Get the best time and number. What's the best number and time for me to call? Now they've now uh, they've said yes four times and the chance that they'll follow through has been increased from the less than 10% to over 80%. Here's a pro tip. Please put this appointment on your calendar so you will not forget it. Don't forget. Final step, get off the phone. Remember, you're in a hurry, right? The best thing, the best thing is to say something like, great, we'll talk then. Got to run. These are the eight steps with tons of the hottest scripts in network marketing on what to say. Now, let's put it all together by showing you some real life examples. So, in the next video, you'll see some real life examples illustrated out, talking to people on exactly what to do.
So guys, I hope this has been a great benefit to you on, on the eight steps to being successful in network marketing with the hottest scripts. You can always reach me on beyondyourwarmmarket.com, Facebook groups, facebook.com slash group slash beyondyourwarmmarket, facebook.com. I am Shannon M. Hamilton. Thank you guys for checking out video number four. We got one more video to go, guys, and I am super excited. That video will be coming out shortly. So uh, I hope this has been amazing uh, and exciting for you as it has been for me. So let's make sure you categorize that list and let's go to work. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.